Chapter seven of Herland is called Our Growing Modesty. The men prepare to be free, grooming and tending to their clothes. Van muses on the men's relationships with their tutors. Terry and his tutor do not get along, and his and Jeff's opinions of Terry have sunk. Terry takes up the topic of surnames, and the men learn that, although the genealogy is tracked, the children do not take the names of their parents. Rather, the children belong to the community. Now that the men are outside, they discover that the country is the size of Holland, some 10 or 12,000 square miles, with a population of around 3 million people. They discuss the food and the plants, and this leads to a discussion of inherited traits, as well as the goal of conscious improvement. They have bred out and trained out the lowest types and make sure that the raising of children is done by the most qualified. The mothers are fine with this because they want the best for the children. The idea that she would choose what she thought was a better situation for her daughter, the woman more qualified to raise her at that particular time, was soundly condemned. In the fictional society of her novel, Gilman gives an example of how this works and why it's more beneficial for everyone. The chapter also offers another smaller theoretical point. Names. There's no need for a child to bear her mother's name because the child has its own. This is a radical notion of autonomy for children, particularly for girls. Later, the same topic is in relation to wives, to give someone a surname and then to take possession of them. Again, a communal society is not about individuals or ownership in the way that men are used to thinking. Theories that seem strange are presented as logical because they all serve the same purpose of service to the community, to country, to motherhood. Throughout the novel, readers will see the argument on the men's side reduced to things being done a set way simply because they've always been done that way.